Hi, children. Welcome to English language segment. How are you today? My name is Ifis. Our topic for today is going out. In today's lesson, we're going to learn some vocabulary for outdoor activities and talk about it using adverbs of frequency. Read the adverbs for things to do when going out. And a conversation about a weekend trip, and learn how to give suggestions and state your preferences. Are you ready? Let's begin our lesson now. Let me ask you a question: What do you enjoy doing after school or work? Or what do you like? To do when you go out, some people, when they go out, they prefer doing some sports or activities, such as playing football, going swimming, or doing boxing. While some people just enjoy doing relaxing activities like going sightseeing, relaxing by the pool or at the beach, or eating local food. Of course, many people enjoy more social activities. For example, hanging out with friends, relaxing with family, going to a football match, or going shopping. Or maybe you prefer to do something more creative, like taking photos, watching movies at cinema. Or going to an art gallery or museum. What about you? What kind of activities do you prefer when you go out? Watch Iskandar and Amina talking about the activities they do when they go out. So, what do you do when you go out? Well, I often watch a movie. Or going to the theater. What about you? I go jogging, and sometimes meet friends in the evening. How often do you go jogging? I go jogging every morning, and you? I hardly ever go jogging. Maybe once a year. I usually go shopping instead. Oh really? So, do you like going to the art street market in the city center? No, I've never been there. I always go to the big shopping malls. I occasionally go there with my mom to find some creative home deco. How often do you travel? I travel twice a year. In winter, I usually go skiing. Do you travel? Yes, I do. Every summer, but I rarely travel in winter. Did you realize the words they use in the conversation? This is what we call adverbs of frequency. We use adverbs of frequency, like. Sometimes or usually, to say how often we do things or how often things happen, we use adverbs of frequency in this order, according to their meaning. Always, hundred percent, usually, often, sometimes, occasionally, rarely, hardly ever, never, zero percent. You should also include frequently with usually. We use not very often too. These are the most common adverbs, although there are more. Here are some examples of adverb of frequency in sentences. They always hang out together. He usually gets home about six o'clock. 
She normally stops working to have lunch. I don't go out as often as I like to. Adverbs of frequency go before all verbs, except be. For example, I always go shopping on Sundays. Adverbs of frequency can also go after the verb be. For example, I am never late for work. Can they also be at the beginning or the end of the sentence? Yes, we can use some adverbs of frequency at the beginning or the end of a sentence for emphasis. Occasionally, I meet her for a coffee. Sometimes, I'm alone. We can use usually, often, sometimes, and occasionally at the beginning of a sentence and sometimes and often at the end. We use adverb expressions like a lot or not or very much after the main verb too. She travels a lot. He doesn't cook very much. Be careful with never. It is already negative, so we can't use it with not. I never go to the supermarket with my mother. When you want to be more specific, you can add the number of times you do something, plus days, weeks, months, or years. For example, take the medicine three times a day. We usually go traveling twice a year. You see them once in a lifetime, if you travel. When you know the meaning of these adverbs of frequency, you can use them to ask your friends. How often do they go out? And what kind of activities they, do they do when they go out? On the next lesson, you are going to read short adverts about going out activities. But before you read, let's do this exercise. Look at all these activities. Now, put the activities under the correct places. At the sports stadium. At the cinema. At the theatre. At the market. And competing in sports event. Show the list of activities and this table on the screen. Give time for students to put the sentences in a suitable box. Do you get the answer? Would you like to check your answers with me now? Okay, for activities at the sports stadium, we have sing songs with other fans and watch your favourite sports team. At the cinema, you can see a film with your favourite actor or actress and watch the latest blockbuster from Hollywood. Next, we see a play and watch a musical at the theatre and can try some local foods or buy some local crafts at the market. And last but not least, if you're competing in a sports event, register before you enter and wear your sports kit. Do you get all the answers correct? Oh, excellent! Now, 
Look at these six adverts. Roller skating, marathon, 30 kilometers on wheels at Sentosa Park, Sunday 13 June, starts at 10 a.m. Register at www.rollerskatingmarathonjune.com. The second advert, Sci-Fi Festival, Saturday, 18 July, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. at the Sierra Art Center for admission fee, 15 ringgit for children and seniors, and 20 ringgit for adults. Next, Saloma the Musical at the Roma Theatre, Ampang Street, Wednesday 15 June to 29 August. Tickets available at the Roma Theatre Ticket Office. Moving on to the fourth advert, Rugby, Southern Tigers versus Northern Giants. Pre-league friendly match. Saturday, 5th August, kickoff at 3 p.m. Main Stadium. The next advert, new multi-screen cinema open Saturday, 18 July, 11 screens with digital sound and 3D projection systems. Oyen Cinema Petaling Square. For full listings, check www.oyencinema.my. And the last advert, Traditional Market, Angrit Town Square, Thursday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Traditional crafts, food, sports and games. Now, from the posters, identify 1. Which advert can you see actors and actresses performing on stage? Yes, advert C. Because the venue is at the theatre. 2. In which advert do you need a special kind of shoes? In advert A, you need to have the rollerblades. Number three, in which advert does the event finish at midnight? In advert B, the sci-fi festival ends at 12 a.m. Next, number four, in which advert can you see two professional sports teams? Yes, in Advert D, where the rugby teams are going to have a friendly match. Number 5. In which advert can you see the latest Hollywood movie? Well, you can see the latest listings of movies from Advert E. Number 6. In which advert can you learn about the culture and customs of people many years ago? Yes, in advert F, the traditional market. And for the last one, in which advert do people over the age of 65 pay less to enter? Yes, in advert B. Seniors mean old people and they only have to pay 15 ringgit, same as children. Now, let's check your overall understanding of the text. Identify true or false for these sentences.
Alright, let's see where we can find the answers for the sentences. Number 1. The rugby match starts at 3 p.m. True. In the advert, the word kick off is used. Kick off means the time when a sports game starts or when it begins again after it has stopped because of a goal. In a conversation, we usually say, What time does the game kick off? Number two, you have to register for the roller skating marathon online. True, it stated clearly on the advert with the links given. Next, number three. Tickets for the musical performance of Saloma can be booked by phone. False. There's no phone number included in the advert. You can buy the ticket from the ticket office. Question four. The Sci-Fi Festival runs for one day. Yes, true. It starts from 12 noon until 12 midnight, only on 20th June. Question 5. The traditional market in Angrik Town Square is closed on Sunday. False. Of course they won't close on Sunday. Sunday is the best day to open business. And lastly, question 6. The Sci-Fi Festival is on the same day as the new cinema opening. True! The date for both events are Saturday, 18 July. Did you manage to get all the correct answers? Well done! Let's move to our next activity. Planning a weekend trip. You are going to read a conversation between two people, Jason and Alice, planning a weekend trip to Manchester. When you read, identify who suggests each of these activity. Write J for Jason and A for Alice or N if it's not mentioned. Now, let's listen and read the conversation. So, we're getting into Liverpool at around 6pm. I suppose we'll just go straight to the hotel. Yes, we can take the taxi. Shall we go to a local restaurant for a drink and something to eat? I think we'll be pretty tired. Okay, so on Saturday, we should get up early to make the most of the day. I'd like to go for a nice full English breakfast. What do you think? I need to buy a present for my mother. So... I definitely like to go shopping. Apparently, the Qual Street Market is good. They have lots of independent shop. It shouldn't take too long. What do you think about the football museum? It says here it's free entry and there's a lot of interactive games. It sounds like your kind of thing. Yeah. 
I wouldn't mind that at all, as long as the queues aren't too long. I'd also be up for going to the Rafflesia Gallery. There's a good photography exhibition on at the moment. We can't just do football stuff all weekend. I'm not into art, but I suppose I could go and check out the science center while you do that. People say it's nice, and then we could meet up later. Do you think we should go for a curry on Saturday night? That's a very typical dish here. Yep, I'd love to. If we aren't too tired, why don't we check out some of the nightlife too? I'm not sure I'll still be awake after all that. I think I prefer an early night. Okay, that's it. I can't wait for the trip. So now, decide who suggests each activity. Going to a local restaurant. Alice. Getting up early. Jason. Practicing English. Not mentioned. Going to independent shops. Alice. Going to a football museum. Alice. Going to see some arts. Jason. Doing a cooking class. Not mentioned. Based on the conversation that you've read, you can see that Jason and Alice are making suggestions, saying what they like and what they don't like doing. Look at the text again and complete the table below with suitable phrases. Firstly, how you make a suggestion. For example, shall we? Secondly, how would you say you'd like to do something? How you tell your preference? For instance, I'd like to and thirdly, how would you say you don't like to do something? Or to decline a suggestion. For example, I'm not that into. You can find all the sentences from the text. Now, let's see. In order to make suggestions, you can say, Shall we? We should. Sounds like your kind of thing. I could. And maybe. To say what you like doing, you can use I like to. I definitely like to. I wouldn't mind that at all. I'd be up for. And lastly, to say you don't like doing, I'm not that into. I think I prefer. I hope you're clear with my explanation. Next time, you can practice using these phrases for talking about likes and dislikes. For example, if someone gives you two options, watch a football match or play a football match, which one you prefer and why? You can say, I prefer to watch a football match because I'm not that into playing. I prefer to be in the crowd. Now, children, we are at the end of our lesson. I hope you're now able to improve your reading skills through all the activities that we've done together just now. Till we meet again. Bye!